Hello, my name is John Welsh, and I'm here with Ralph Godlick, who is a professor of music theory and composition at Boston College University. Ralph was a recent guest of the Harvard de Bozis Colloquium in Italian Studies, where he spoke to us about his recent piece, Quando il fiume giallo si arricchierà, which means when the yellow river clears, a work inspired by the life of the Jesuit missionary Matteo Ricci. Ralph, I wonder if you could speak to us a little bit about the origin of this piece and how exactly it came about. Back in fall 2010, I was commissioned by Father Jeremy Clark SJ from the History Department at Boston College to compose a work for a ongoing exhibit devoted to Jesuit cultural learnings. The exhibit itself is entitled Binding Friendship, Ritchie, China, Jesuit Cultural Learnings. Father Jeremy Clark basically gave me a green light as to what I would compose to accompany this exhibit. I could choose the length, I could choose instrumentation, and very importantly, choose if I wanted to any texts. I asked Father Clark if Richie had left behind a diary or a journal, and to my wonderful surprise, he mentioned that actually shortly before his death in 1610, Father Matteo Ricci did leave behind a journal which became the basis uh, for texts that I would then be setting. Now, I wonder if you could explain what was your knowledge of Matteo Ricci before writing this piece and what was, who was the man you discovered and how did you learn about him? Matteo Ricci is someone I had heard about but did not know much about his life. The further I did research writings by Ritchie himself, but also of others who had um, performed research on Ritchie, I learned that this gentleman was an incredible erudite scholar. His contributions in a variety of fields, including astronomy, optics, horticulture, mathematics, physics, shows a missionary deeply steeped in a variety of disciplines. But all of these disciplines come and emerge from a deep faith that he carried within him. What I was most impressed about Ritchie is not only this faith, but also the pragmatism of 27 years of missionary work in China. And this comes across in the journal which he then wrote shortly before his death. Now, one of the words that you've mentioned a lot is variety. I know that you drew from a tremendous variety of texts and languages in, in composing the piece. I wonder if you could speak to us about how you captured and conveyed the dynamic variety of Ricci's life in your work. I want to write a piece which involved texts, and the texts are all those in which Ricci comes down to us. So these texts include Portuguese, Italian, Latin, and Chinese. Now, for the Latin, I have to give a little bit of an explanation. The diary itself was written in Italian, and I'm very thankful to Francesco Ersparma, here teaching in Italian studies at Harvard for helping me find passages in the original Italian, which then were also translated into Latin. The Latin texts are in two categories. There's the direct translation of the Italian original, but there are also added commentaries by the translator, Nicolas Trégol, a father um, Jesuit as well, which uh, add commentary to the diary itself. There are also passages in Portuguese, which Richie would have spoken, as well as I've included Italian, the vernacular of Richie himself, and that is the language which he did pen his, uh, his journal. I know that you also attempted to link each of the various languages to a different form of instrumentation. The wonderful part of composition is is drawing a parallel or drawing a relationship between text and instruments and how you would like this to come across. It became very obvious to me that as an Italian, I wanted to set those texts which are in Italian directly with the violin and the voice. The texts that are in Chinese and Portuguese are also directly linked just with the violin and the voice. The 
texts which are in Latin translating the Italian, those are set for voice, cello, and violin. And the texts that are just actually in Latin, which have commentary, those are set for cello. And this became basically a wonderful way of subdividing and associating an instrument with a choice of text. And you made an interesting choice in terms of the voice as well, choosing a female singer. I wonder if you could speak about what led you to make that decision. The basic idea behind this is one of objectivity. Richie, throughout the ages, has come to us in a variety of languages. In many ways, we can say he speaks many voices. And so having an alto voice, a female voice, be actually the principal agent, it seemed an obvious um, contribution to the many different ways and voices, in many ways, languages that Richie does come down to us over the ages. One of the, another thing that I greatly appreciated about the piece was the way that it managed to convey an Eastern Chinese landscape without sounding overtly or stereotypically Chinese. Could you talk about how you achieved that, that delicate balance of conveying it without conveying it in an overt, over-the-top manner? This gets a little bit technical, but the entire piece, the source material, is actually the opening two chords of the piece that was played by the violin, not only on a local but also on a large-scale structural level. On a local level, the chords suggest intimate profiles that then can be very easily associated with something that we may call Eastern. So a pentatonic landscape is inherent in those chord choices, even though I know don't uh, readily try to write something Chinese. Um, on a large scale level, the repetition of certain notes in those opening two chords actually suggests a structure which binds the whole piece together. It's A, B, A, C. Each one of those large scale structures with an added introduction is preceded by ritornello. And at this point I should maybe mention what this ritornello is. Ritornello means return. And because as a missionary, naturally, the entire work that Richie was doing springs and comes from his faith, it seemed to me that I needed to use something that would anchor all these texts. And the anchor became the contemplation to obtain love from St. Ignatius' spiritual exercises. I divide that text into four parts, and each one of those four divisions prefigures the A, B, A, and C. In many ways, grounds, anchors, recalls, and motivates what is to come. It's very interesting that you mention return, because in the life of Ricci, one of the most interesting notes about him is that once he left his homeland, he never came back. And so there was this interesting dynamic in his life between what remained constant and what was constantly changing and exposing to, to new things. And I think that that's another thing that you conveyed in, in your use of the ritornello. I would also mention that this piece in, in a way is an extended meditation. And what this ritornello accomplishes is a sense of return. It's a sense of coming to something that we know and from that point, we can depart into, again, unknown territories, unknown waters, in many ways, traveling through various landscapes. And this is exactly what Richie, of course, does in those 27 years as missionary in China. And the piece, as one extended work, 20 minutes long, I don't mean it to be felt as a work which is going to lead you through those various chapters, A, B, A, C, but rather as this extended meditation, which gives you a sense of repose and return, and with that helps you to move on. Of course, looking back all the while of where you've come from. It's interesting to, to hear you speak about how you would like the piece to be listened to. For viewers of this video who would like to go and experience the entire piece, where can they do that? What kinds of opportunities would there be to hear uh, the work in its entirety? You can visit www.bc.edu slash binding friendship. And there will be a link there to the piece. It will actually allow you to look at all the text that I've set. It also gives you some more background to the work itself that I've penned. Thank you very much for, for being here with us today and telling us about, uh, about Matteo Ricci and about your, your musical composition. I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this work and uh, speaking about the extraordinary work of Matteo. Thank you.